Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video, we are going to talk about the latest uh, Battlefleet set for the Sultanate and more specifically for the latest nation to appear for the Sultanate, which are the Egyptian. So for this, we are taking a look at the Abydos Battlefleet set and it's quite an interesting one because there is a lot of stuff inside. Uh, first of all, before we start talking about everything that you will find in there, uh, we have to re remember what is the Sultanate playstyle. And it's quite specific in the sense that there is uh, more than any other faction in the game, uh, a lot of their power that comes from the movement phase. Well, there is no movement phase from their uh, movement capabilities. They are extremely mobile. The Egyptians may be a little bit less than the Turkish, for example, but still it is really key to them. For example, the entire Egyptian roster is a skimming, which means that you really can play around with your capacity to hide behind an island and just to bounce on the other side of it and still to be obscured by it. Because when you are aerial, you can, of course, you ignore terrain, but it works both ways, like you cannot hide behind. Uh, when you're skimming, you can just stay a little bit in the back and then just bounce off of the cover without having to maneuver around uh, very easily. So that is a huge strength for all skimming factions and for the Egyptians even more because uh, they are fast, they are fast. Uh, though they are more fragile, the Sultanate, than other factions for their point cost. They are more glass cannon E. Uh, even though the Egyptians uh, have this problem a little bit less, they are still very expensive and they have very little in the way of boosting their resilience. That can be a little problematic indeed. Uh, they do have some things like armor the decking um, in many places, uh, boosting their defenses against aerial weapons. Uh, they do have the uh, Oracle site construction here and there, uh, not everywhere, though, be careful. And uh, yeah, this uh, this means that they need to be played with a little bit of finesse. They will not be just j rushing to the center and saying like, okay, come get me, because then the enemy will be able to come and get you. Uh, the Sultanate likes also to play with ranges. Uh, they like they have some weapons uh, that they take from the Covenant, for example, like the Particle Beamers or the Etheric Lances, that are very good at all ranges. And so what you will want to do is, if you face an opponent that is very good at uh, long range, for example, you will want to rush forward very fast, and vice versa, if you're, in a, you're playing against, I don't know, uh, the Alliance uh, with Heat Lances or Scandinavians that want to board you, basically the whole Imperium wants to board you, uh, then you stay very much in the back and you're still very uh, efficient this way. So you yeah, play uh, towards the uh, your opponent's uh, weaknesses uh, rather than your own strength, even though uh, the Egyptians have uh, strength uh, more in the long range, I would say, uh, though, yeah, of course, when you have particle beamers, uh, you are extremely fine at point blank as well. Uh, overall, they do have a higher floor than most armies because uh, if you play them very aggressively and without using cover, uh, they will die fast. Like all skimmings, they have uh, the, this skimming capacity bonus that is inbuilt in their cost. They cost more. So if you play them like normal ships, uh, they will die faster. Uh, they cost more for their pawn cost uh, compared to uh, normal surface ships. And so yeah, you need to be very careful with this. They do not have the range protection of the aer aerials. So really, if they are taken uh, off at uh, outside of cover, yeah, you will have a, a bad time, but uh, if you start to master them, they can be a lot of fun. Okay, so what do you get inside? Uh, you have basically uh, one sprue that you get four times, and a resin ship. You also have, I'll say it here, uh, you have uh, two portal tokens, uh, which is important because um, with some other ships, I'm thinking of the Heritage specifically, you do not have the tokens that you need in the box. So it's the size of an SRS token. So you have a lot of those, but it's always nicer when you can have a little portal token, uh, literally with a transparent resin in it. Uh, you have this mess for uh, Dreadnought that is absolutely huge. Like you've, uh, you've already seen it on the unboxing video. This thing is massive. Uh, there are three ways that you can build it and all three versions are quite different. Uh, they all bring something different to the table, uh, which is always appreciable, and we'll see in detail what they do. Then you have uh, four sprues, so four uh, frontline cruisers and four frigates mass ones. Uh, the mass two uh, cruisers can be built in four different ways. Uh, you can absolutely build one of each if you want, but there are some that uh, go very well, they scale very well when they have a bigger uh, squadron. We will talk uh, 
quite a lot about each variant and how they can interact with each other. Uh, for example, if you build the Abydos, it, uh, which is the, one of the variants of the Dreadnought, it combos very well with the Savar, which is the artillery version of the Frontline Cruisers. We'll talk about these synergies a little bit in detail so you can know, depending on which flagship you want to build, which cruisers you need, or vice versa. If you really want one type of cruiser, which flagship goes well with it. And finally, we will have four uh, frigates. Uh, there are two ways to build them. Unfortunately, one of them, in my opinion, is stronger than the other, which is something that can happen in dystopian wars, even though we try, like the game tries to be as balanced as possible. Uh, here, there is clearly one good answer. I will see which one, so you build the right one, though they both look very cool and very stylish in their own ways, and you can absolutely proxy one as the other if you want. Uh, dystopian wars is cr clearly a, a game that you play not in the competitive tournament uh, like you would do 40k, so when there is almost the same weapon, just a little detail, you can absolutely proxy. Uh, if what I tell you now for version 3.05 changes uh, in the next version in six months, uh, no worries, you can proxy your ships. And as always, whenever you have the choice, don't glue your main weapons. They can fit very well without gluing, so just put them. And when you want to change, just uh, go around. Or you can magnetize if you really want the best quality. And you finally will have four Scarabs token. Uh, it's those you see at the bottom right now. And those are kind of like SRS tokens. They are a little bit uh, surprising. Uh, we'll talk uh, right now about how the Egyptians handle their SRS tokens. Uh, you can either have the Tanis version of the Dreadnought, which sends a lot of those tokens, or it's an update, an uh, upgrade that you can buy for any uh, mass two cruisers. You don't have a dedicated uh, aircraft carrier for the Egyptians. But you can upgrade your cruisers to have those tokens kind of like hanging on the side of the hull. First of all, it looks extremely cool. And uh, then they become what they are already, a frontline cruiser, and they also send some SLS token one or two, which is actually really interesting. Like, I really like this concept. It really gives identity to the Egyptians. We've seen this also for the Turkish aerial, which can have some uh, fighters on the side and that drop. It's extremely cool. Reminds me of Skies of Arcadia for those that know these old video games. Uh, so that's for the Turkish, but for the Egyptians, it, it's even cooler. They have these Scarabs drones, I guess, which look amazing. If I we will see the artwork uh, in big at the end of the video, they look so cool. I love this. And just if, if you build your ships for the rule of cool, put the Scarabs every time, 100%. Looks amazing. Uh, they are counted as SRS tokens, kind of, sort of, these uh, Scarabs, and they are a little bit more powerful. Uh, than normal SRS tokens. So it, they are not literally SRS, they have a little bit bonus. They are basically you will do more damage with three tokens of scarabs than you would do with three um, SRS tokens that are basic ones. All right, we will start with the Abydos Hover Stronghold, which is the first variant of this uh, massive uh, Egyptian dreadnought that you can build and which is the one that gives uh, its name to the box. I uh, really like the appearance, like this kind of like E shape of this ship. Uh, it looks very cool. And this is basically a repair platform, kind of like what the uh, Muromansk was for the Russians. But this looks amazing because it, you actually can fit the ship that you want to repair, like inside the ga gaping hole on the sides. And you can repair it like physically two ships at once. It looks very cool. Or, or you can just combine it. <laughs> you can use this uh, catamaran design that you have with the Sultanate and just clip them together to make a one massive ship. Uh, if you want to make home rules, it can be very fun. Okay, joke aside. The Abydos, what do you get and why would you want it? I know that some people say that it is the weakest variant of the three, and uh, I can see their point, but it's probably what I will build first and what I will play first, uh, because I love the combo that you can have. Um, it is 320 points, which is up there in terms of uh, points. Uh, it's way more than the usual battleships uh, mass 3 that you have, uh, and it is relatively fragile-ish. Uh, se armor 7, Citadel uh, 14 is not crazy. 8 hull points before it gets crippled is not great, and then another 8. But what it does have armor decken, which is fine. What is it good at? Uh, not taking fire, because it is a large target, so uh, if your opponent as you in multiple angles, it can use all its, for example, it can use broadside and torpedoes if the angle is right, because you can be counted as a large target into multiple firing angles. Be careful about that. And um, what, what does it do except <laughs> tanking, because it does not want to be tanked. It's extremely good as support. Uh, it has heavy escort, which is good. It has a skiff dock, 
which means it will have skiff for himself as well. You can boost that by another two if you would like that. Um, this is something that uh, you need to take into consideration because by, it means that it works extremely well as an anchor. You will build around, have stuff uh, around, and it does want to be like right in the center. Uh, it also has, and this uh, reinforces this uh, role, uh, advanced repair facilities 4, which means it will launch four, uh, 8 dices, and uh, means you have a high chance of repairing yourself, repairing ships around if they have disorders and stuff, and also of uh, giving uh, hull points back left and right. This is something very important to consider, because you will want to be in the back to activate a little bit later once your other ships have been damaged or something and then to give uh, some hull points back and it also has supply depot and this is where the combo starts to appear uh, there is some ships specifically one ship that really wants it it's the sabah because it has a uh, limited on its weapons and it really doesn't want to run out of batteries of uh, weapons because it's a very powerful weapon so if you have an Abydos next to a pack of two or three Sabah, for example, those guys can shoot all game long and uh, you will be uh, able to continue using them turn after turn after turn. You will repair them with heavy escort. You will boost them as well uh, so they can intercept rockets and uh, torpedoes and this kind of thing. Knowing that Egyptians already have armor decking, which means uh, double hits count as single hits for the aerial weapons, it means you are very very resilient against uh, air attacks so that is something really to take into consideration the last thing that it has is logistical support and this is good this is really good i love logistical support you need i would recommend always when you build a list to have one source of logistical support it is not as necessary as uh, fortunes of war in my opinion but it is very good the uh, every turn that i've played ever you end up the, uh, the turn with almost no card like you have one or two like uh, should i spend a card to for the initiative keep it in reserve or should i use this very powerful ability we will try to counter uh, it's really important to have more cards or at least as many cards as your opponents so that they cannot dictate the game in their own turn so having one source of logistical support in a quite tough ship that will not charge forward is a good thing i quite like the abydos it does an have, it does have a surprising amount of firepower because it has six uh, forward-facing gun battery. Do not, do not uh, underestimate this. It's more than it's like 21 dices uh, at uh, closing range, which is where you will be most of the time, which is nothing to scoff at. Uh, it has a rear um, heavy turret that you can see here. You can and probably will uh, replace it. I am still militating to say, like, uh, to the team that develops the game, that you should be able to replace it with a generator like a mirage would be amazing or i don't know a portal generator or anything something that, that will make it more sultanate e and that would help the abydos being more considered when compared to the tanis and the pharaohs because it does need this little extra thing to make it interesting having a mirage would make it really cool and thematic for the sultanate as well um, so yeah if you want to play sabah this is the way to go Otherwise, the other two variants might be a little bit stronger if you're a competitive player, but that, you know, it comes and goes. As always, it's very good to uh, magnetize the different options, and that's what I would recommend you to do if you, if you have this, because this uh, allows you to be prepared for the future and to always get what is best for you at this precise moment. All right, let's have a look now on the next uh, variant, which is the Pharos. It costs 15 points more, and it is more vulnerable. What? What are you saying? Uh, yes, because it first of all, it's Citadel 13, which means double Citadel will happen very fast, especially when you are a large target and you are lumbering. Lumbering meaning that uh, gunnery uh, weapons, which there is a lot of, will roll blanks against you, period. So you are fragile, you are very fragile, uh, you cost a lot, and then you're like, but why would I take it then? Uh, if, why would I take this big glass cannon? First of all, remember, remember that skimming uh, means that you should not be shot at until you decide to go to the offensive. Hide very well behind islands, make sure the enemy doesn't have line of sight uh, on you, uh, and then just bounce off after, like, when you want. You can even stay on the island when you're skimming instead of going on the other side, so you can just take your big pharaohs and drop it on the island, and as soon as you touch the island, it's considered that you see through it, kinda. Like it's not there, and people can see you as well. So be careful not to be engaged too fast. 
and it has a, this guy has a lot more weapons. It has a D cannon battery on the rear, which is not seen on the picture here, but it's so uh, good. You can keep the D cannon, fine. You can also upgrade, the, especially those uh, two front uh, heavy rocket batteries that are here, that are shown as heavy gun batteries, but you can replace those two uh, big turrets with particle beamers, for example, and all the weapons here by default are etheric lances and not rockets, which starts to be very, very powerful. Uh, even more with heavy firepower, which the Abydos had as well, by the way. Uh, this means that if you get starting at closing range with for the etheric lances, you will deal so much damage, like it's insane. This thing really can punch a hole in the toughest target. Six etheric lances, boosted by heavy firepower and uh, two particle beamers and a D cannon in the back. That's that's a lot. Like <laughs> it's very powerful. In the lore, if you can read the little text, they say uh, it has so many particle weapons between the particle beamers and the inbuilt etheric lances, uh, and of course the heavy particle cannon that is inbuilt, that it does not have enough power to be fast, like from the generators and stuff. That's why it has lower citadel because it has so much munitions all around. And it is lumbering because yeah, all the power is taken by the weapons, like like in Star Trek, all power is the weapon. That's basically what happened. So it's quite fun. It's uh, it's gonna die every game you put it on the table. It's gonna die because it's gonna be a huge priority target for your opponent, uh, and it can destroy it relatively easily. And uh, but it's so expected to die. But in the couple activation that it will survive at full potential, it really like each activation will obliterate at least a ship in front of him and probably a whole a little squadron here and cripple other things left and right it is extremely powerful but again be very careful how you play it uh, if you want a little uh, easy to play and uh, no stress uh, ship don't take this because really uh, it's a lot of the points 335 it is fragile and especially at lower points games uh, your victory will depend how you use it how your enemy tries to counter it because it's such a polarizing uh, ship, uh, it can either die extremely fast if you use it bad and your enemy can get a line on it, or it can win entire battles by himself if you manage to engage one target at another, because if you get into the closing or point blank range of this thing, uh, you're basically not for. And finally, what is probably probably the easiest one to use, uh, the Tannis control ship, 335 points, the same as the Pharaohs. And this guy uh, keeps from the Abydos the six forward-facing gun batteries, which is really good. You can upgrade them around, but I would like keep them as gun batteries. It's very good for what it wants to do, which is to stay far away-ish to the enemy. And what does it get? Uh, it has from the Abydos advanced repair facilities, but only two. Still means six dice. It's still very much uh, appreciated. Uh, it loses from the Pharaoh's uh, lumbering, so it's fast uh, and. Well, not really fast, but you, the enemy does not reroll blanks around you with gunneries. Really good. And it has a, an inbuilt portal generator to the rear, which is actually good because even without considering all the combos that portal generators allow you, since uh, you are a sultanate, uh, this will uh, boost your the range of your uh, repris, uh, portal strike, which is all these scarabs that you can launch. It launches eight uh, scarabs which uh, already sounds big when you compare it to other carriers, but let's remember they are more powerful than normal SRS. So eight of capacity of Repri, it's a lot. Like this is really your main source of power. I mean, 21 dice of gun batteries, even more if you use heavy firepower is appreciated, but really like this is clearly a carrier hide behind an island. Uh, don't worry too much because you can fly over it, like skim over it if you get too close. But this is really your main role uh, because nobody will enjoy having eight SRS of Repris on them like at all. Uh, plus it has priority signals which uh, allow you to basically try again uh, if the enemy cancels one of your uh, Valor card. Not specifically needed uh, because heavy firepower on the Tannis is fine, but uh, there are some uh, units in the, the Sultanate that do really want to succeed in their um, Valor effect, especially the next order ships and the mechs that will be released later. So it's good to have this. Uh, it goes back to Citadel 14, but be careful, it only has 7 hull points before it gets crippled, and then it has 9 more uh, in the crippled state. But be careful, because you lose half of your high pace capacity if you lose these 7 hull points, so uh, it can go quite fast, so be careful about that. Uh, still, I do believe this is the most powerful and easy-to-use variant of the 3 Dreadnoughts. 
And if you don't know what to build and you absolutely don't want to magnetize like at all, um, first of all, it's a bit sad, but yeah, I would recommend uh, building the Tannis because it's a ship that will always be efficient. Um, the, these Kepli's are very powerful, it shoots fine, the Tannis, it is uh, tough-ish, uh, and it has a portal generator which is always appreciated. So really a good ship, uh, and it knows what it wants to do, which is to hide as much as it can, send SRS tokens, and then, then when the enemy get close, it can punch back with all its many gun batteries. And now we go to the uh, frontline cruisers for the Egyptians and we will start with the Sobek coastal skimmer. And uh, it allows us to say that uh, in a generic manner for all the Egyptian ships, these are Toth-ish, they are Armor 6, they are level 12 and 4 hull points in battle ready, 4 in cripple, which is average. It's the default uh, rating of the benchmark of all the ships. It does have armored decking, which protects it from uh, the um, aerial weapons that can, may target it. And uh, that's going to be about it. It has only a one heavy gun battery, uh, but it is boosted by two smaller gun batteries uh, to the front. And when you compare this, it's actually more dices at closing range, for example, which is where you want to be, than, for example, another heavy gun batteries. So what I'm saying is two heavy gun batteries at the perfect range, like closing, it's going to be 9 plus 4, it's going to be 13. While here, it's going to be 9 plus 3 plus 3, so it's going to be 15. So you actually have more firepower with the Sobek than, I don't know, for example, a Yorktown. When you uh, take out of the consideration the fact that it's um, the Yorktown has give them hell, for example. But yeah, in terms of raw dice, this is really good. It does have coastal bombardment, which does absolutely nothing for now because we don't have landing rules yet. Uh, it has a landing vessel which is also the same, so maybe you pay this in the points directly which is not impossible but right now those do nothing. It does have mine layer which is actually enjoyable, it's actually quite good. And um, for uh, well, we didn't say the price, it's 118 points, so quite up there in terms of cost uh, and you're like, oh, do, is it worth it? I'm not actually sure. I think you pay for the coastal bombardment and landing vessels and it makes it really not, not a great choice. You can, however, uh, first of all, have Ferrica escorts like most of the Sultanate ships. Uh, and you can especially have uh, for plus 20 points, so you reach 138, it starts to be a lot. But you gain then a uh, Hepri attack run for 2 slash 1 which means uh, you are basically a small aircraft carrier. It's not great, uh, for, but for 138 points, you are toughish, and you still have all your gun batteries and stuff. And uh, you can send two SRS, uh, like uh, Scarab tokens each turn. Uh, I would actually, if you really want to have a Zobek, I would recommend to upgrade it each time, because if you uh, do get the basic version for 118 points, uh, it's underwhelming when you compare, like it doesn't have any specific rule that makes it very good or very tough. It is skimming, so it's fine-ish, but it's like not amazing. Uh, yeah, really. Um, but if you get it, uh, these uh, Hepri SRS tokens, it is then very much a glass cannon. Be very careful because you have 138 points on a ship that is quite easy to sink. But, 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 then you do a little bit of everything. You are a quite fine aircraft carrier. Uh, Scarab's to uh, tokens are very good. If you start to have two ships like this, it starts to be really something. And on top of that, you are uh, an expensive aircraft carrier, but that has uh, basically 15 dices at closing of uh, gun batteries. And that's a lot, plus mine layers. So if you take the basic version, it's underwhelming. If you take the version with the aircraft carrier 2 slash 1, it starts to be good and you start to see why you would take it, but it means you are very much a glass cannon. So be careful with that. Another version, is the Mesectet Strike Skimmer. This guy, uh, you would see it from the first time and be like, why Why would I pay for that? Like, uh, it's uh, four, like you, you are at 122 instead of 118. And what you do is you basically replace uh, one of the heavy gun battery with a smaller gun battery, which uh, does mean that you lose four dices and you're like, ah, really? And you lose uh, also, you lose uh, the mine layer and all the rules about uh, landing. And you're like, well, what the hell? Uh, what do I gain for this? You gain two things. Uh, you gain Vanguard, which is fine. I'm not sure you really want to charge forward. It would be good if you had, for example, a portal generator, but it does not have it. Uh, but the interesting thing that you get is heavy torpedo sound. 
and this is actually not nothing at all. Uh, this is uh, a lot of dices, and uh, yes, it cannot target uh, aerials and it gets intercepted by SDV, which is usually lower value than ADV, uh, usually, not on Egyptians, but usually it is. And it does mean that your ship is good for all ranges. Uh, at long range and extreme range even, so first turn for sure you will have targets with this, and then even like at closing range, heavy torpedo salvos are still a huge threat. And it's almost more threatening to your opponents, this heavy torpedo salvo, than the gun batteries. Um, almost. Um, or depending on the target, it actually is. If they have shields or, I don't know, shroud, it's actually going to be your main source of damage. Because it cannot be shrouded, you cannot use shields against torpedoes and stuff. So for 122 points, it starts to be a really, really interesting package. Again, very fragile. Even more if you do, again, the upgrade for plus 20 points of Repli, uh, which I might recommend, but then you are extremely expensive, 142 per cruiser. And But then you do everything. You have gun batteries good at closing, uh, especially. You have these heavy torpedo salvos, which means you are great at extreme range up all the way up to closing. And then you also send SRS tokens. So it's like, wow, you do a lot. It's a huge package uh, that is pricey, yes, and easy to destroy, but it's a huge threat. Uh, but then if you do that, it means you have a huge target on your back. Like, I mean, your open will not uh, let you let you go because you really will have this, uh, this capacity of firepower that is insane compared to your resilience. So there is a real chance that the, the, the opponent will dedicate all that he can to destroy your mesectets as fast as possible. And make no mistake, uh, 612 at 44 as a wound, a hull point, uh, it does mean that uh, any uh, battleship or some big squadron that combine their attack can sink you in one time. Like a double citadel and boom, you are basically gone or cr very crippled uh, for sure. So yeah, yeah it's, it, it is a risk, it is a risk for sure. Uh, you can get crippled fast, but this is what I would recommend. Uh, even better, even better uh, than the, for the previous one, you really do need to play with terrain and make sure that you are stay out of line of sight or at least out of range of your opponents until you really want to go forward. And now we go to one of my favorite, uh, the Sabah Baraj Skimmer. Uh, this guy has two small uh, gun batteries to the front, okay? And it has a salvo missile silo instead of a heavy gun battery or small gun battery. Uh, it does have spotter, which can be fine, especially since you do have capacity to have a capri SRS token on it for plus 15 points uh, only. So you can trigger this roll on your own, uh, which is very good. If you can upgrade like one of them or the whole squadron, it's going to be fine. It's going to help. Uh, spotter allows you, for example, to reroll blanks or uh, to um, avoid shroud, for example. And uh, it also has armor decking, so if you enter an extreme range cruise missile uh, exchange with an opponent, for example a Union or something, uh, there is a relative chance that you will be boosted and you will win the, the firepower, like the exchange of artillery. Uh, especially if you stay near to an Abydos, which has heavy escort and stuff, and you have armor decking. Like if you fight uh, Washington uh, cru uh, mis missile cruisers, or I don't know, the um, Covenant Quintillion uh, artillery ship with its uh, cyclonic missiles uh, head-on, there is a big chance that the Sabah will actually win. Uh, it is relatively cheap for a ship of uh, that uh, firepower, uh, 120 points, but the Salvo missile silo uh, is actually limited. So be careful, you do need to uh, make sure that you have your source of uh, supply depot around. Luckily, the Abydos does have it on top of boosting your defenses. So yeah, I would recommend if you want to have more than one Sabah, and that's how you should play him. You should make a big pack so they can really combine all their missiles in one devastating salvo. Uh, I would recommend to play the Abydos as well next to it. Uh, we will see this on the battle report. Probably the first one that we will play uh, with the Egyptians uh, is going to be with this, so you will see how it works. But yeah, that's what I would recommend. It looks very fun. The Sultanate did not have that crazy amount of uh, extreme range, uh, long range firepower uh, like this. It did have, for example, for the order and their lances and stuff. But it was not crazy. Usually they were from long, like mostly closing, let's say, uh, because they like to have gun batteries and maybe a little bit of rockets, but uh, also particle beamers. This really gives you a unit that can stay all the way to the back uh, and keep bombarding all day long and do a ton of damage. 
be careful if your Abydos gets uh, sunk or you don't have an Abydos and stuff. Uh, your salvo missile silo may run out of um, munition fast and then you just pay 120 points for two gun batteries not a good deal do note do note that you have a rocket barrage as well which means that uh, you will be able to boost your main uh, salvo with uh, more dices fine and also especially with rolling blanks means you are not so necessary to have spotter but uh, then you can roll blanks from rocket barrage and also uh, for example ignore the shroud which can be very good especially if you start to be in the missions that happened that night uh, that really really uh, trouble you uh, if you don't have spotters around and finally we finish with the biggest one of them all the crazily crazily expensive manjet heavy skimmer this guy has it all it has two small gun batteries one big heavy gun battery and it also has heavy broadsides and heavy broadsides some people underestimate them but at point blank it means you will do a lot of damage and it also have a heavy magnetic bombard which we've known from the alliance and uh, yeah that, that's a lot but you do pay for this 138 points for a ship that is exactly the same defensive profile wow uh, it means that if you pay the Hepri uh, SRS uh, upgrade, it means that you will be at more than 150 points, 153 exactly, uh, for this whole package that can be sunk in one huge salvo. So I'm not sure how I feel about this one. It does have an absolutely insane firepower. Uh, usually you would hear me saying like, this thing has 15 dice, uh, like a single ship has 15 dice at closing with it gun batteries actually 17 with focus gunnery rolling blanks that's great heavy broadsides you know what i think about it it's a great tool uh, that when the enemy gets too close you can really really do a lot of damage with this plus the sultanate can uh, do some shenanigans with their portals to use their uh, heavy broadside at long range great heavy magnetic bombards if you start to have at least two of the manjets it's also a very powerful weapon so it has everything like it, it is very very powerful in terms of firepower however it starts to be a lot of points that can be sunk very fast. If you feel comfortable with the game, and uh, for example, the Egyptians are not your first faction, I can recommend the Manjet. Uh, played well by a skilled player, this thing, like a squadron of three Manjets, will win the battle by itself. <laughs> I exaggerate a little bit, but not far from this, because this thing will do everything. Bro heavy broadsides from the turn one with four holes. It's gonna have a ton, and I mean a ton of damage, with all the gun batteries and the heavy magnetic bombards will shoot all the way to the back i think it's aerial so you can even uh, shoot at the enemy's air aircrafts all the way to the back and uh, sunk them at the same time so it's really really powerful plus it's skimming so again if you are skilled uh, it means that you will be able to avoid uh, the lines of sight uh, of the enemy and then just appear when you want and then okay uh, let's go broad sights here and there gun batteries heavy bombards you might even board if you want and send your SS tokens great amazing but you do pay 153 points per ship for this uh, if you do that and then you are very very vulnerable to a counter-attack I, I actually say 153, I would not recommend to buy the Hepley upgrade on this. It's already very, very powerful. It does not have spotter or, or anything. So I would really recommend not buying the, this upgrade for this guy, especially since it is 1 slash 0. So you might lose it fast. So keep it at 138 points and use it as basically a walking firing platform. It has something for every range, heavy broadside for point blank, gun batteries like all of them for closing and the heavy magnetic bombards for the further range. This is what I would recommend, uh, stay in position until you can go out and have targets at every range. If you do this, yes, it's going to be devastating, but uh, it does take a little bit of skill and it means that your enemy does not focus it, for example, with aircraft or like the, yeah, this kind of thing or with uh, even giant robots. Uh, it starts to be expensive enough, uh, one manjet, that it is not a bad investment to drop one of your giant, I don't know, Hochmeister Colossus if you are Imperium. Uh, to just destroy one of them because it's so lethal and it's so fragile that it's a good trade is to destroy it with a robot and in one activation and then try to see around what uh, more you can do but really like it's so much points if you have one or even just one midget with the upgrade of Hepley and i have a robot 100 percent of the time i will come and 
pop next to you uh, turn two and uh, try to destroy it in one activation if there is two even better but yeah these things will have the biggest target of your fleet on their heads but it can be a strategy i mean if you, all of your targets uh, your dreadnoughts and everything has a big target on it your enemy will be a little bit overwhelmed and will not know who to focus so it can be a strategy to have only expensive ships that the enemy needs to target asap and now we go with the mass ones and we will start a uh, spoiler with the one that i think is the best the Hashashin Destroyer Skimmer, and this guy costs 40 points per model. It starts with a squadron of 2 and can get up to the squadron of uh, 5, and it is good. It is good. There is no two ways around it. Uh, it is fast, first of all, uh, speed 11, turn 9, this thing can go around, and it has Shadow Hunter, which means you can deploy it very aggressively and then redeploy it however you see fit. Two gun batteries is good, Armadia King means it's going to be tough to uh, all the aerial weapons. And it has gun runner, which means in a big pack, the gun batteries can really combine to make one devastating attack. Plus, and those that play Turkish already know how good it is with the Timia frigates, uh, it does have a lot of weapons. Light broadsides is meh, but it's fine. Uh, two gun batteries, uh, you, we are in destroyer level of firepower here, so it, it is a def, uh, destroyer, so fine. And it also have micro torpedo salvos which uh, is uh, actually quite good like uh, micro torpedoes are uh, very powerful they are quite uh, um, precise and uh, i prefer them compared to regular torpedo salvos so those that played timir or played against timir also know this but two gun batteries with a gun runner is already a huge threat and add in the mix micro torpedo salvos and you have a ship that is really really powerful for its point cost like broadsides are just the cherry on the cake. Armor 5 uh, is fine-ish with 3 hull points, and Citadel 10 is not great. You do have armor decking, but it is not perfect. Though you have Shadow Hunter, so if you see that you deploy aggressively, do <laughs> run away uh, and uh, get in position for a better attack next turn. Remember that those guys are skimming. So unlike, I don't know, Excaliburs for uh, the Crown, or valiance for the union this kind of ship uh, you do not have to uh, maneuver around the islands you could you could you are very agile you literally agile well mass one doesn't matter so much but you have uh, turn nine you can go do whatever you want but it's best as with all the skimming to use to stay just behind an island until the right moment and then to just fly over it because you're very fast and get at the good range to use your light broadside ideally and your gun batteries with a gun runner very important to use gun runner and thus to be a big pack and also your macro torpedo salvo this is how i would absolutely play them you can upgrade them with etheric lances for all ranges uh, i can see the uh, art point being made with this because uh, yeah this would make it an even more glass cannon uh, but with shadow hunter you can't really and skimming shadow hunter and skimming means you can if you are a relatively skilled player, uh, anticipate that you will be at the good range and not get killed before, especially with armor decking, which protects you a little bit against SLS as well. So you can think like, okay, this can work, this can work, but uh, it starts to be 50 points per model and that starts to be quite a lot for something that is only armor 5. So yeah, uh, I'm not against etheric lances here, but I still believe that the best uh, point like uh, for money, for like uh, the best efficiency for the points is with the basic one with two gun batteries and then we go for the kopesh uh, which is actually not the that shit that is right there but i will sum it up very fast uh, the kopesh is exactly what you see here except it costs 38 points per model okay uh, and it gains one tip of speed okay uh, it gains on top of shadow hunter vanguard which is fine and auxiliary main layer uh, which is also quite uh, quite good uh, um, not uh, mine uh, layer, sorry, mine sweeper, which can be fine, especially with Vanguard and um, Shadow Hunter. It means that if there is uh, mines too close, this is probably the best ship of the game to removing mines. So something to consider there. But but but, uh, it loses micro torpedo salvos, which means that if there is no mines in front of you, you just got yourself a quite inferior version of the Hashashin with the Kopesh. Uh, you lose micro torpedo salvo, which is a big part of your firepower. And you gain Vanguard, which is not super needed, five inches when you are already speed 11 or 12. Uh, yeah. So it 
if you know that you play all the time against, I don't know, Italians, for example, uh, then yes, it's very fine to have uh, a Kopesh. Otherwise, uh, take the Ashashin every single time. It's for two points per model, gaining micro torpedo salvos and losing a Vanguard or whatever is a huge deal. It's uh, like, it, it, it is not worth two points uh, to lose uh, micro torpedo salvos. So be very careful. Uh, the both ships are, are close enough in design that you can proxy one as the other for sure. Take the one that you prefer the design of. Personally, I actually prefer the Ashashin, so lucky for me, which is the design with a little hole in the middle for the torpedoes. Uh, but you can absolutely proxy them as one or the other. Uh, just don't be uh, don't be too, uh, an annoying guy and uh, play them all the time at a, as an assassin. And whenever you see someone coming with Italians, be like, oh, actually, you know what? They they are Kopesh just against you. <laughs> don't be this kind of guy. But yeah, they can absolutely proxy them. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, assassin all the time and Kopesh if you play in a meta with a lot of mines because Shadow Hunter, Vanguard, and Minesweeper is ideal perfect way to remove mines all right now you have the abydos battlefleet set uh, you bought it at a great price because you used my op place for minus 10 percent and you also supported our channel on the way thank you you want to have a little bit more maybe you, it's your first step into the sultanate and you're like okay how can i expand from there uh, I would recommend, if you really plan to have a large sultanate force, to have the Suleiman Battlefleet set. Um, this uh, ship, the Suleiman itself, the fleet carrier, is amazing. It's, it, it had to be nerfed because it was the most powerful aircraft carrier and probably one of the most powerful ships in the entire game. And even after all the nerfs, it's still probably still one of the best aircraft carriers of, of the game. It sends so much, it is so tough, much less tough than it used to be, yes. But it's still an incredible package for the cost. Uh, it sends a ton of ships. I think it's the largest SIS capacity of the game at 12. Well, you can see on the image it does have a, two runaways. And uh, it is a very good uh, centerpiece. It does not want to go brawling in the center. But if your enemy starts to focus it uh, down with a lot of long range and extreme range uh, firepower, it is resilient enough to hold, uh, to hold against it unless your enemy really dedicates the entire fleet against him. And then it means the rest of your fleet has time to do their own business. And since the Egyptians really want to uh, be able to enjoy the time and they don't like to be focused on because they're all glass cannons, having a ship that is in appearance a little bit fragile because it's an aircraft carrier, but it's actually surprisingly tough for the point cost, is very good as a distraction carry fix. I'm not saying throw their Suleiman in the center, but uh, I'm saying that it is a, a very good ship to have a little bit in the back, kind of like as a distraction. Plus 12 SLS token is quite huge. Uh, if it does not get focused on, it will do tons of damage turn after turn, and it combos good with the Hebrides. Um, it also forces your enemy to kind of come forward and uh, to get in range of all your Egyptians because uh, the enemy will have to deal with the Suleiman. You also have three Turkish frontline cruisers, uh, which are quite uh, quite interesting actually. They are quite mobile, even more mobile than the Egyptians, even though they are not skimming. So be careful, you cannot fly over islands. And you can combine two uh, frontline cruisers to make a stronger one. That can be a flagship or can just be a normal a twin deck, like catamaran design uh, cruiser. Quite cool, uh, very interesting. We've, you've seen them a couple times on the channel and I like them very much. They are very uh, efficient, but also glass cannon, like the whole Sultanate anyway. You also have three Turkish support cruisers. Uh, this is amazing. Uh, the Turkish probably have some of the best support cruisers of the entire game, uh, all factions uh, dealt with. Uh, the aircraft carrier, whatever, but they have, for example, the Konya. Uh, they, well, they have a few. The Aydin is amazing as well. They can be attached. They can repair, give you logistical support, boost your mass ones, uh, boost your escorts. Like they, I'm not going to make an orbit review of this, but all the Turkish supports are very, very good, except the Konstantinov, the aircraft carrier, because don't build it. You have the Suleiman, which is already amazing. Uh, you will have six Temir frigates. We talked them a little bit uh, before. They are basically kind of like uh, the Ashashins with torpedoes, uh, broadsides, and gun batteries. Cheaper, but with one less gun battery, but still also with gun runner. So really some of the best mass ones of the entire game. Very, very powerful damage dealers. Uh, they are very, very small like the model. So your enemy can be like, eh, whatever, they're not so, uh, so good. I promise you, the, your opponent will make the mistake once to underestimate the Timirs, and then he will understand that they are one of your main damage dealer of your entire faction. 
and you also have a six spheric skiff escorts, which are these little flying things on the side. Uh, well, the Sultanate is probably the faction that has the most synergies with its escorts, and uh, they look amazing as well. So do more is always good. And so something to note is that the Abydos uh, needs two escorts. So you, you don't have to represent them on the model. They're just kind of like tokens. So you can just say they are here and put a dice or something. But it's best if you have the actual models, of course. And uh, yeah, the Abydos, when you buy it, you have two of these Ferric Skiff escorts included in the price. And then you can buy two more. So using four of them to really have this very good anchor. They will boost your defense, boost your boarding, boost your point back firepower. It's very good. So the Suleiman is a very good way to have start to have quite a lot of these uh, skiff escorts, which are spoiler alerts for the Sultanate, which the more you have, uh, the better. You will never have enough of the Ferric skiff escorts. And then you have three Sultanate SLS tokens, always good because uh, yeah, you need them. So yeah, the Suleiman is a little bit expensive. Sorry, it's a little bit expensive. I think it's something like 100 euros before the minus 10% of my replays, uh, but it is the largest uh, box that the War Cradle does. And uh, you get six proofs plus the absolutely massive Suleiman. Like if you've seen it, you've seen it on, some, on one of our battle reports, and it's just a huge, chunky piece of resin. Plus, it's a beautiful ship. Look at it. If you want something cheaper, you can go with the Retage Battlefleet set. Uh, it's the one we talked in the beginning to say that this guy is a portal ship but it does not have portals. Uh, a little bit sad, but you don't care because, because you bought the Abydos Battlefleet set, so you already have some portals. Great. Uh, this, uh, they are part of the order, which I um, will not go into the fluff, but they're extremely technologically advanced compared to the rest of humanity for obvious reasons, if you know their lore. And they're basically some of the most elite ships of the game. Uh, they, they have, I will start the other way, you have four Carol's destroyers, and they are Probably, probably the most powerful mass ones of the game, but they are pricier <laughs> to a, uh, in equal respect. Uh, they are extremely good at boarding, at uh, extreme rate. They, they do everything, and they are the only mass ones currently in the game that cannot be destroyed by breaching the citadel. So it, it tells you something. Those are mass ones, but they're almost the same uh, capacity. I, I exaggerate, I exaggerate. I was about to say they're almost as strong as mass twos. I exaggerate, but. They're really like mass 1.5, like they are so good. They can be attacked through the retage, those Carolus, or they can be used on the side. The retage itself is also very expensive. It's a mass 3. It's uh, more than 300 points, uh, way more. Uh, but it's basically, again, it does everything. It has lots of torpedoes, lots of uh, long range firepower with all its judgment lances. It has fortunes of war, amazing. It has a huge blast attack with its Ilios blast, probably one of the most powerful blasts of the game. It has extreme mobility. It has insane boarding capacities. And uh, it's, as we say, it's very fast and it puts portal less than right. It can be in reserve. It can appear from a portal. Uh, the uh, Order Battle Fleet has a strategic reserve inbuilt in its capacities, and it, it's just amazing. Like, it's one of the best ships of the game. Uh, it is relatively fragile for its point cost. Uh, well, that's a Sultanate thing, as always, more glass cannon. But this is one of the most powerful sh uh, ships of the game. It does everything, uh, except tanking. Uh, but you've seen it in our some of our battle reports, uh, especially the one where uh, it was against the Alliance, and uh, you've seen what it does. It can pop in the rear of the enemy lines, and just obliterate everything left and right with boardings, with judgment lances, uh, with the blast, with torpedoes, and burnt sides, and oh, whatever. And plus, it has Carolus with them. It is insane. It is insane. It, uh, this box is relatively cheap um, compared to other boxes. You do get a little bit less uh, stuff because it's mostly resin. The Carolus are basically Temir frigates with some uh, resin uh, bits, like with some extra bits. So you do get a little bit less in terms of plastic and resin than you would think, but it's still a cheap box because you only have four mass ones and a flagship. But in terms of point cost, you do have a lot. It's a very cheap and it's extremely fun to play. Probably some of my favorite ships uh, in terms of gameplay, because when you play this, you really have this feeling of playing, I don't know, custodies in 40k in the sense that they are the elite of the elite and they guard the emperor and they purge the scourge of the earth and they will explode the sun on us somehow. And finally, the last option uh, that I would recommend and really recommend is the Sultanate Star Set. Uh, a little bit kind of the same as the Suleiman Battlefield set. This is really good to hold the line 
and uh, to be in the center while your Egyptians are doing their shenanigans, hiding behind islands and uh, being glass cannons. I mean, the Turkish are also glass cannons, but they are more like a regular navy in this sense, and they need less to be extremely well hidden uh, as the Egyptians do. We talked already about the Turkish frontline cruisers and support cruisers and the Temir and the uh, escorts. As we said, uh, all of those are very much needed, uh, but you get one sprue less of each, one sprue less of the front line and one sprue less of the support, so something to take into consideration. Uh, and instead of the Suleiman, you have the Anatolia Bell Cruiser, uh, which is much smaller, but it is still very good. It is cheap in terms of points uh, compared to a battleship, for example, or compared to the Abydos or the Retage we talked about, or even the Suleiman, which is very expensive in terms of points. Uh, it is cheap. Uh, it plays like a strong cruiser. I think it's, uh, even in the orbit it's called like a battle cruiser and not a battleship. So it played kind of like a cruiser. Don't think it will hold the center by himself. But it is quite good. It is quite good. It does have a few uh, gun batteries. Not the full three heavy gun batteries package. But still uh, quite good. Uh, played a little bit conservatively. And there are... It's basically a strong cruiser. But there are two named variants that make it very, very interesting. One of the variants... I think it's, the name is a Dogan. Don't quote me on this. Uh, I think it's Dogan. Is the one with portals. It has a portal generator, which is very good, and it can do boarding through the portals. So it's extremely fun and thematic, and I love it. And uh, yeah, it's very fun and uh, oh, quite efficient for the point cost. It's a little bit more about movement shenanigans and playing with portals. And then there is one, another named variant, which is I, mean, I forgot the name. Whatever. Um, Another variant, which has focused gunnery, so already starts to be quite strong, and uh, it has fortunes of war, which is something that you always need. Uh, you don't have it inbuilt in the Egyptians, so if you uh, don't want to buy the Retage, for example, which also has fortune of war, I would really recommend getting the Sultanate starter set, because uh, then you get uh, fortunes of war through this name variant of the Anatolia, and it's a really good ship, period and uh, you have more and more frontline cruisers and support etc of the turkish uh, i didn't put it here but you also can if you uh, if you want share the new fortune and glory starter set uh, to get all the uh, turkish aerial uh, fleet uh, which is really good you can play them as mercenaries which is actually something that you might even want to consider even if you play turkish because they really the crimson league has great benefits to uh, for them uh, like if you play them, really, I would recommend. Uh, and yeah, it's still in the theme. It's all also Turkish, very beautiful Turkish aerial ships. And this is a good recommendation as well I can make for you uh, because it will look amazing on the table. Uh, if you don't know what to buy after the Abydos, between Fortune and Glory, between the Solonet starter set, the Retage, the Suleiman, etc. Well, it depends on the prices. Uh, the most expensive is, is the Suleiman, then the starter set of the Sultanate, and then the cheaper is the Retage. So see how much you want to uh, spend. Always remember that you have minus 10% from IOE place, and uh, yeah, you can start to build. Though, uh, one recommendation that I would do probably is try to make one game only with Egyptians because they have a specific play style, and all these options that I gave you uh, include order or Turkish forces as reinforcements and maybe you will want to play pure Egyptians uh, which uh, is actually quite uh, gonna be quite fun in terms of gameplay and if you want to do that it sounds a bit weird right but I would recommend even buying a second uh, Abydos set uh, which would allow you to have eight cruisers so you really can start to do a lot of different things eight mass ones again very good you can have one pack of five of one type and another pack of three to trigger gun hunt, uh, gun runner as best as possible. And as we have seen, all the uh, variants of the Dreadnought of the Egyptians are good. So you can absolutely have a Tanist as an aircraft carrier and a Pharos as a counter punch or an Abydos to be in the center and have all the Sabah uh, around. So there is absolutely a possibility. And uh, I think I will conclude on this, that uh, the Egyptians are probably my favorite looking faction of, of the game. Okay, now there is a French, but for sure they're in the top three, for sure. And uh, I really want to collect a full 2000 points fleet for the Egyptians. If you do want as well, because you see this image and you're like, yeah, that's what I want, absolutely. Start with the one Abydos uh, fleet, play them uh, purely, and then you will see, do I want to stay in the theme of these very fragile glass cannon Egyptians? Uh, 
that's absolutely something that can work. It can work. Yes, uh, I'm not sure it will be a tournament winning list, but it's for sure going to be very uh, fun to play and you will really gain skill game after game after game and at some point you will be a really good player with this. Or you will see if you want some order as a deep strike or some Turkish to hold the lines. And of course, you can also have some mercenaries uh, that will you will be able uh, to pay. Some of them are quite tough, especially the Black Wolf with all the Russian cruisers. If you don't mind mixing uh, ships around, take some Russians as mercenaries to hold the center. Uh, just a few ships like this. While your Egyptians, after sending the mercenaries that we don't care about, uh, will do all the planking on the on the sides. Okay, thank you for having watched until the end. Um, if you like the video, remember to give us a thumbs up. It really helps. And also, if you type a comment uh, to let us know what you think, if you plan to play Egyptians, Sultanate, at all, or not at all, uh, if you give us a comment, you will gain a chance to win an entire massive crown force. And when I say massive, I mean massive. Uh, or a very large already alliance fleet. We will have two winners for the winter contest. So please enjoy and let us uh, know what you think about this. I read every comment. Sometimes I don't have time to answer to every single one of you but I try to answer to as many as possible. Thank you very much. Until the next video, remember to keep spreading the love all around you and take care of yourself, of course. Bye.